were the upstart of the block. They were like, we can take traditional media and put it on its ear. Hey everybody, I'm here today with Angus McKelvey. He's the incumbent and he's running for re-election for the State House District 10, which is West Maui, Ma'alaya, and North Kihei. And we're going to walk story. Let's walk story, right? All on. right. Thanks for Thanks having me, Angus. guys. Um, so could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? What are your uh, ties to Maui and what got you involved in uh, Let's see. I was born in Honolulu, a year old. My parents moved me to Lahaina side. My dad was the architect in designing the Amphac Kaanapali Resort that you see today. His job was to come up with all of that. My mom had had a beauty salon at the, what was then the Sheridan Maui back in the day. They'd come out several times for business, fell in love with Lahaina, and they wanted to raise their kids there. So about a year old after my brother was born, we moved to West Maui, Lahaina. And I've been there pretty much my entire life, almost 49 years. We've seen a lot change, believe me, in those yeah. times from small kid Hanabata days to today. And you know, I, this is the problem when you're it's such a... Cosmopolitan did a poll recently. Number one bucket list place in the world of their 100 million readers online in their magazine. And guess what their number one destination is, I suppose it? Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii. So you have, I mean, back when I was a small kid, you know, we were still a sleepy town, right? Local neighborhoods. You had the kind of, you know, old school Haina. The visitors weren't on a poly and that was it. But now you've seen this explosion, right? And it's affected the housing market, it's affected the traffic, it's affected everything. You know? So it's how do we grapple with this unprecedented destination attraction and how do we get contributions and revenue from all of those who are coming to visit and play in Haina so that we can improve our infrastructure, create quality schools, and do things to make sure that everybody has quality of life like we used to have back in the day. So, you know, being born and raised and knowing so many people from small kid day, I got involved in politics because I was working as a political aide in the legislature. I was involved with the Democratic Party when I was in college in California for the time. And I came back and there was a guy who was a representative and he was just getting mowed over in front of the And we were losing stuff left and right. And so I said, you know, I'd like to throw my hat in the ring and represent Lahaina. Yeah. Speak for the, the local people and you know try to make a difference at that level is the experience that I have. And so that's kind of how I got into it. So you've been a rep since 2006. Yes. In, in that period of time, you know, what have been some of your highlights from accomplishments or things that you've been a part of? Well, the biggest one for me, and always yeah. will be, is saving one a little bit. Mm. I mean, I put every bit of political capital I had into that because I saw that we had an opportunity that was never going to come around again. Right. Because of missteps at the county level, the pension fund for the seniors, which was tied to the land, was being jeopardized by a downgrading in zoning. So I went and flew to D.C. and met with Senator Inouye and just said, you know, I need, we need to rescue this. Is there any way you can get me federal money? And he was so funny because I talked to his assistant. I'm like, well, how much are you going to need? I go, probably about $19 million. And she goes, no way, no way is that going to happen. So, of course. So what... <laughs> So what happened was, is I could meet with him one-on-one -on -one and we had a great meeting because he was friends with my dad he, back in the day. We'd get Christmas cards from him and Maggie all the time. And he goes, how much do you need to save our bay? And I go, $19 million. And he calls in his assistant and goes, put it in the budget, $19 million. And I was like, right on. And then he passed away. And now we came in the next legislative session and I was told that they were going to sell the Poa Point to a bunch of high-end billionaires and carve it up to private housing. And I'm like, there's just no way we can lose this treasure. So at the time, you know, there'd been a reorganization. I'd come in as a chair of a, of a committee and I just said, look, for all the support and help I've given you guys, I want one thing this year, please. I need the money for Honolulu. We can save the bay, we can save the pension for all these pensioners, it's the biggest win-win. But if we don't do it now, we're gonna lose it to people who are gonna come in and buy this away from us. So we successfully did it. The bill got passed, it became law. The state has the land now in perpetuity. And now we're moving forward to trying to create a community vision. Right. So for all the different uses that people you know, have for the poor point in there. So that to me personally has been my proudest one. I think the second thing would be is despite the fact it was a convoluted mess in the last day was to get in the line of bypass on track. Right. When I first came in, one of the reasons why I ran is my you know, predecessor had let the funding die. And then Governor Lingle basically said, we're gonna kill
kill the project altogether. There's going to be no Lahaina bypass ever. And I said, I'm going to go in there and commit to getting the funding back because it was dying on the house side with the budget was formulated. So then what happens is we went ahead, we got the money in the budget, we got the bonding in, and we had an issue where we found archaeological terraces, and we worked with the Native Hawaiian community to realign that stage of the bypass, and we got it on track. And I think where it really showed its value, besides helping with traffic on another route, was when we had the fire. Had that fire happened back before the first stage of the bypass, nobody would have been able to get off the highway. We still got to fix. We still got to do a whole bunch of stuff to create another access to the bypass. There's a lot of work to be done, but at least we have another way in and out now. And for close the floor, we have nothing. I guess those two would be kind of the big accomplishments. You know, so far as just we have a little bit of time here, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. in the next um, session, if you're reelected, what would be some of the things you'd want to focus on? Managed retreat is the biggest one we got to focus yeah. on. When we are losing our highways. In leaps and bounds, king tides. Like I've never experienced that when I was a small kid. There was, I mean, told me what king tides was. I would have thought it was a new Chuck Norris movie. <laughs> you know, so the we've got to. It's an emergency. I've been working already with the majority leader and the speaker psyche. It's going to be part of the majority package next session if I'm reelected, and we're going to be a key component of a statewide management team effort. All right, thank you, Angus, for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much, but thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tommy. Aloha, aloha, Maui. Love yeah. you. Stay remember, strong. remember to vote. November 6th. Yeah, November 6th. Aloha. Aloha.